If I'm being perfectly honest with you, I don't always write the best code. Sometimes I use too many variables. Sometimes I don't comment out or indent the code correctly. And sometimes they can include bugs. But today, all of those issues are over for me and for you with the AI Code Optimizer. Hi, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers. And today I've got a fantastic add-in for you. You are just going to love called the AI Code Optimizer. This incredible add-in will take any type of code in any module and automatically update it according to your specifications. It's gonna be an incredible training. I cannot wait, so let's get started. Hello everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. I've got a really exciting training for you and a very cool free add-in that I've built just for you and I can't wait to share that with you. Basically what this add-in is going to do is going to allow you to select any workbook and any module inside that. Once you do that, you can simply decide whether you wanna check for comments or misspellings or add comments where they're needed, optimize the code for indentation, remove any unused variable, fix any code issues, and click one button, it's gonna all be done for you. For example, let's take a look at this code right here. Inside here, I've got some code, it's got some additional variables that I don't need here. It's not indented, there's no commenting. So we can see here right away that this code could use some help. So all I need to do is send for review. And what that's gonna do is gonna send it to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is gonna take a look at it based on all of the conditions that we've set and in just a few seconds, we see that we have some updated code. Here's our original code, where it would look like. Let's take a look at, so we've got our variables here that aren't used. Now we've got an updated code with only the necessary variables. We've got code that's been properly indentated and we've have code that's actually commenting out. And all we need to do is just click one button and our code has now been updated. So if we take a look back inside that same module, we're gonna see there we have all of our comments, we have all of our properly indented, just like that. In just a few seconds, our code is now professional, issues have been fixed, unused variables have been removed, all the comments exist, and I'm gonna share everything with you on this today. Please don't forget, I create these comprehensive applications each and every week, so make sure you do get subscribed. I also create application updates and VBA basic training for you. Application updates are on our Patreon platform. VBA basic trainings are on YouTube every single Saturday. So I've got a host of training for you to make you excellent and successful with Excel. So I've got a lot to share with you. Make sure you do get subscribed, click the notification icon bell. Also, don't forget to comment below. I respond to each and every single one of your comments every week. In fact, this little add-in, I'm considering adding it onto my AI tool pack. This is a great add-in that I created. We've got an AI assistant, fix my formula, fix my VBA code, get table data, which is really cool. You can get any data. We can actually write any VBA code if we wanna write code. It'll simply ask us what we want to create and it'll automatically create it for us. So for example, maybe we want to say print all active sheets all we need to do is just go ahead and click request code and in just a few seconds it's going to be ready for you just like that we have the code and an explanation along with it that is the ai tool pack six incredible features inside that so make sure you pick that up all right so let's get started on this training what i've done is i've created an add-in so we see that we have some settings inside the settings is simply an api key a module and a temperature I'll be going over how to get that. We can also optimize the code here. So once we get the optimize, it's super simple. As you saw, we can simply select from any of the open workbooks. If it's not here, you make sure the workbook that you want is open. And then what we can do is we'll select from the modules. We did goal macros and we could do goal screen macro. So we didn't do this one yet. So we can select the module now inside a workbook. So let's take a look at this goal tracker workbook. We're inside the VBA code now. So inside this module here, we can put in some additional variables that aren't part of it. So we're gonna imagine this variable as string and we'll put in useless variable as string. So I want to create these variables that aren't used in the code and I want to see if AI can automatically remove them. Uh, let's just do any row as long. So we see that these variables are 
not used inside the code. So what we want to do is we want AI chat GPT to eliminate those. And also let's go ahead and there's pretty good commenting on this, but let's update that. You see now this is kind of a mess and I've kind of messed it up. So let's take a look and see how good we can make this just with AI and proper. So let's go back into our goal tracker or whatever we want. We're going to go into the added. We're going to go into the code optimizer here. I'm simply going to select the workbook, which is our goal tracker. That was a training we did a few weeks ago. Goal screen. This is the module that we were just looking at. How do we know it's goal screen macros? We can see right here called goal screen macros. I'll double click on that goal screen macro. So that's the one we're on. And I'm just going to select them all again, just so that we can check for everything. And I'm going to send for a review. And in just a few seconds, we have our original code here. So we see nothing is formatted right. I'm going to look all the way up here. We see we have our variables here that were not used. Now we take a look at this. We see that those variables are gone. So it removed the variables that were unused, which is quite helpful. It is properly spaced out and indented the code. It's added comments where they are needed. And also we see it's set top position. Everything has a nice comment. Everything is organized. Let's just take a quick look. I'm going to look back inside the code right now so we can see the code before I make the update just so you can understand. So here's the code and here's the goal screen. So let's take a look at this module here. We see we have the original module here. Now all I'm going to do is go back inside here and I'm going to click update. It's going to ask, are you sure you want to replace the existing code? We're going to say yes and the code in the module is updated. We're going to take a look back inside that. Here's the goal screen module. We see our variables I just created are gone. Everything is nicely commented out here perfectly. Everything spelling is all done and the code is back nicely done. So AI can be a very powerful tool. And of course, this template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the link down below. Just look for the word download and I'll get that right over to you. So there's a link there. Make sure to get that or a button wherever you see that. I'll make sure that you get that. And of course, if you do want to see this as part of another template or we can create this as part of a product, let me know. Like you want me to put this in the AI tool pack, I can do just that. Of course, I'm going to show you how you can use this for yourself. And of course, the first thing what we need to do in the settings is get our API key. And that's going to come directly from the open AI website. So let me walk you through that now and we'll be explaining the model here and the temperature here. So let's go ahead and go inside that. So I'm going to just cancel that for now and we're going to go directly into the open AI. So this is openai.com, and this is where you're going to get you'll sign up and want to get an account. Now, I'm pretty sure they're still giving a lot of free credits when you sign up. So you don't need to worry about that. It'll take you a long time to use those free credits. And so what you want to do is you want to get signed on. So you'll log in and sometimes they hide the login. But at the bottom, it's API logins where you want to go. So once you're logged into the API, you'll set up your account and then you're going to see something like this. This is the API login. And now they've changed a little bit of things. Now what you want to do is you can create several projects. So if you see down here, I've got some projects. You'll create a project. So let's do that. And you'll just call this test project. Originally, you would just add a new API key, but I really like this, especially for me. I've got many projects. Let's see if I can spell that right for a change. There we go. So now we've created our test project. And when we select on here, we can see that we've got the test project. We've got some information on. We can go to the dashboard. Now we're still on the test project. And what we want to do is we want to go into API keys. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new secret key. We can view any API keys that are not assigned, but create secret key. So we give it a name. So let's just use this test our code optimizer. And then we can say which project we want. Of course, test project. We can restrict it or make it read only, but all is what we want. We can create a new secret key. So once that's done, all we need to do is copy that. And it's okay if you see my key, it doesn't matter if you see my key because I'm going to delete that right away. So did I copy that? Yeah, let's hope so. So then what we're going to do is we're going to go back into a workbook or whatever workbook we're here. I'm just going to copy that in here and paste that right in here. Now, GPT-4 is the model. Now, there's a few different models that we can use and uh, I'll probably go with the GPT-4 model. So if we go into the API references and you kind of want to learn a little bit about the models, you can find it in here in the API references. I'm oh, sorry, the docs. Let's go with the docs here. Docs is a little bit quicker. Inside the docs, you'll go down here and you'll see models. So this is where our models are going to be. Actually, I'm going to use GPT. 
T4 Mini. Mini's a little bit better. It's more affordable, but you can put that in here. Either one of these, these are all good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put GPT-4 Mini in here, paste that in there. Now the temperature is how accurate. There's a little description. Basically, it's they take more chances here. You get more ideas and here is more stable. So I like to usually keep it around 0 0.4, 0 0.3, especially when we're doing code. We don't want to take too many chances here. So, you know, I keep it right around here and then we just save it. So that's all we need to do as far as the setting. Now I've shown you the optimized code already. It's very, very simple. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to go into VBA and I'm going to show you how I created that. But as far as from a user standpoint, all we're going to do is select from open workbooks. If the workbook you want is not there, you just simply open the workbook. So if I've got another workbook here and let's say the coffee shop POS, this was a fun training. And so I'm going to open this training up. And now, of course, because it's an add in, it's going to work in every workbook. So we just click on optimize code. And now, of course, the coffee shop POS will be here. We can select which module. So I've got two different modules here, such as order max. And once again, check for comment misspellings. Now this is nice because especially for me where I misspell 50% of the words, that's a pretty good idea, right? So also add comments. Sometimes I don't always add comments and it's really nice. If we take a look at this one, I guess it's pretty good in here, not too bad. Uh, for trainings, I tend to do it. So I, I've been pretty good about adding comments, but you know, we could add more. We can do better. So adding comments, look, look at this. <laughs> Uh, ud pay. So let's take a look at that. So this is the <laughs> order macros. Okay, so that doesn't really help. So let's see if ChatGPT can help my spelling because God knows I need all the help I can get. So order new uh, comments are misspelled here. It's not looking too good. So let's do that. I'm going to go back in to here and I do want to add comments and I do definitely need this should be default checked for my coding. Remove unused variables and fix code issues. All right, so we send it for review and it'll take just a second and depending on how long the code is within your module and we can take a look so here's our existing code and let's take a look uh let's see if it fix that ud pay and here we see we have update so the spelling is now corrected on this comment here so it says update which is correct we've got some nice actually the commenting was pretty good already so it didn't need to update that but that looks pretty good. So at least it fixed the spelling. So we can see how it's going to fix it. It looks a little bit more organized than my original code, which wasn't too bad, but things are looking good. And of course, all we need to do is just click update the existing code as you've seen now for the third time. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting into this and we can take a look at the code here. We're going to go back in the order macros here of this one and we see that we have update here. The spelling has now been fixed. Great, so how do we actually make this happen? Well, what this is, oh, I'm gonna close these workbooks, is an add-in. So we see that automatically, even with new workbooks, we have this add-in available to us, which is kind of helpful. So how do we create this and how do we access it? So we've seen how we can now create the API code and I figured out we'll probably use GPT-40. The uh, mini wasn't working, but I'm gonna check that out by the time I release that to you. GPT-40 works. I'm gonna check the mini. I think that uh, I just had some spacing wrong in it, but I'll double check on that. So what we want to do to create this add-in is we need to make sure that we save it as an Excel AM file. And of course, how do we access this? Inside the developer, if you don't have this tab available, all you need to do is click customize the ribbon on any one, and you wanna make sure that the developer is selected. Once you're inside the developer, we're gonna to go to Excel add-ins. And if you've downloaded this, we simply want to browse and locate for the downloaded. So for example, let's say we've got another downloads, we would locate it here. Now keep that in mind that when you download something, often if you're on a newer version, we need to go into properties and there's often gonna be an unblock checkbox right around here. Sometimes you want to make sure if it's visible, if we see unblock, we want to select that. In this one, it is not, but maybe another one it is. But anytime we download something on any newer version, so let me show you that again. I'm just going to bring it up here. We're going to right click here, go to properties. Make sure that you've selected the unblock, but all of mine are unblocked, I think, because the reason is that I have already, uh, yeah, I've already saved the location as a safe space. So automatically mine are unblocked. So make sure you do that. Then what you want to do is you just select it here and then you click okay. 
And what that's going to do is it's going to automatically add it inside one of these. So you see, I've got a lot of add-ins. I've got two, the AI code optimizer. That's the one we're looking at. The Excel AI tool pack, which is the one I give you a preview of before. And that's going to be available using the links down below. All right. So the AI code optimizer is the one we're going to be working with. Now, if we take a look inside our VBA, we say I've got the AI code optimizer as a workbook. I've got the Excel tool pack here. I've got a book two with no code. We could probably close that. There's no need to have that open. And so I've got essentially three workbooks open An add-in is essentially a workbook. However, if we go here, we see that we have a setting sheet, but if we try to view the object, we cannot. The object is actually the sheet. So where are the sheets for this add-in workbook? Inside the add-in workbook, we've got user forms. We've got three user forms, but we don't have any sheets. Why not? Well, because it's saved as an add-in. So if we want to view the sheets, just like any workbook, it has sheets. But if I want to view them, I'm going to need to double click this workbook. I'm also going to need to go into the properties or click F4. And it's saved as is add and is true. If I change this to, whoops, that was quick. If I change this to, let's go back in here. If I change this to false, like you see here, the sheets will automatically appear, which you saw there right here. And there's not much in this sheet. So this is actually the add -in. Now that we've changed is add -in to false, it is still an XLAM file. So we see here, XLAM, that means add in. If I try to save this, it's going to give me a problem. It's going to say this extension cannot be used with the selected file type. Change the file extension to XLSM or we would change the file type and I don't want to save it there. So what I would mean by that is once you go into this workbook here and you change it back See the is add in here, you change it back to true. Now this says is add in and the file extension is XLAM. So once those two things are true, right? XLAM and is add in, then we can save it all we want. We can make our code changes if we want to. We can make our form changes and save it without problem. But if I want to show you what is on the sheets, I will have to change it to this workbook and I will have to change it to is add and equals false by double clicking. And on the sheet, there's almost nothing to this workbook. I'm saving the API key in B2. I'm saving the model inside B2 and I'm saving the temperature in B3. That's it. That's all I'm doing. So there's nothing else in these sheets. So it's very, very simple. When you're creating add-ins, it's always best to work on it as an XLSM file, a normal Excel file with macros. And when you're ready to use it, then you change it to an XLAM file. So that's what I do. I work on these. I work on them as XLSM type files. And when I'm ready to change it, I change it to an XLAM. And then I change is added to true here in the workbook properties. Then it's ready to go. Then all I need to do is wherever I have saved it, I would just go into the developers. I would browse for that XLAM file, I would select it, and then I would open it. Then I would make sure it's selected. So that's all I would do here. So once it's installed, it'll be checked. If we uncheck it, it will be uninstalled. So if I click OK, we see that that option is no longer here, only our AI tool pack. Once again, if we select it, it's going to be available to us. Because it's an add-in, it'll be available for each workbook, opened or blank workbooks. And so within this add-in workbook, I've got essentially three user forms. So the first one is the focus on the settings. The other two are for the optimized code. There's two steps to this. The first is basically entering your workbook, entering your module, checking the settings here, and then of course, send for review, or you can cancel the review. So I've got those three user forms. Let's take a look at each individual ones for that. So first we have the code optimizer. Let's go to the code optimizer setup, and of course the settings form. Now I have trainings specifically on creating user forms, both basic and advanced. So if you want to learn how to create a user form, of course, I've got that. So we don't necessarily need to go into that detail on this type of training because I really want to focus on what makes this training special. The only thing that I should probably be doing while I'm with you is making sure that fix all the misspellings. <laughs> settings. Okay, that looks right. So what we want to do is we want to be able to save the API key, save the model and save the temperature. You did see where I'm saving those inside the workbook on B1 
B2 and B3 of the settings sheet. So we have the settings sheet, we have it right here. So there's very, very minimal code. I've got a JSON converter, which we're not gonna go into. I didn't even make that. So basically that helps us when we get the response back from ChatGPT, it helps us parse the response. Also, we have the code optimizer macro. So all the macros inside this add-in are basically inside here, the ones that we need to worry about. Now, we did see here inside this, we've got a custom tab and that tab has two buttons. Once again, I've got a training that's gonna take you through every single step of creating a custom tab, but essentially we're gonna use the Office Ribbon X editor in this one. And we're going to create a brand new tab called Code Optimizer. Inside that tab, we're gonna create a new group here called Code Optimizer. You can see this is a group here. AI code optimizer. Inside this group, we have two buttons. We have the settings button. We have a unique ID for it. We have a label name called settings. We have a logo. Now I've added two logos. I've created them AI. You can insert your icons. If you want to add more icons, you can just click insert icons. So I created two PNG icons that I've added in here they're just png so i've brought them in here i've given them very specific names and i've used those exact same names here and here we want to make sure they're named and then of course i've given them a size which is both large and a macro that's assigned one macro is called show settings and one macro is called show optimized code form those two macros are inside our code show settings and show optimized form so inside our code here we have show settings now, because this is from the ribbon control, we want to make sure we're using control as I ribbon. So that means it's coming directly from the ribbon. And within that macro, it's very, very simple. All we are going to be doing is we are going to be able to take whatever's in the setting sheet in B1 and populate the API key. So we have here inside our settings form, we can check the name. Let's bring this over a little bit closer here. The API key. This is called the model. And this is called the temp. So basically for each one of these fields, I want to populate what's on the sheet. This is relatively simple. We're just taking what's in the sheet in B1 or B2 or B3, and we're populating the individual fields. And then we are going to show the form. Actually, I can bring this down here. This code could use to be optimized. Gee, I wish I had a tool for that. Oh, I do, as a matter of fact. So within the settings form, we're going to do these three things, and then we're going to show the form. Very, very good. So we understand how that, and of course, we need to save those settings. When we save the settings, there's a macro. So if I look inside the settings form here, and I've got a save button here, and I double click on that save button, it's gonna take me inside the code. Another way to get to that is to right click and click view code. So basically we have a few buttons. We've got unload me, which simply is going to clear the form out and hide the form for the cancel button. And the save button, we're gonna run a macro called save settings. When the user form initializes, I wanna build up a list. What do I mean by build up a list? I'm gonna run that for a second. This list here is populated by 10 different numbers, about or 11. So all the temperature settings, I wanna build this list of all the options that the user can select from, 0.0, .0 all the way through 1.0. A way to do that is when we initialize the form. That means before the form is shown, I wanna actually create that list. So we're gonna dimension the eyes double. We're gonna clear all of the existing, remember this is our temp field. We're gonna take in that settings form. And once again, we can optimize the code a little bit if we want to with settings form. I don't know if it really saves us code here, but we could do something like this. We don't need the form once we call it out here. And also the same thing here. So we can bring this up here as we loop through that and we can get rid of the settings form. So we can do that too. That's another way to do it, but since it's only two conditions, two issues. So focusing on this settings form, what we want to do is I want to clear all the options that might be in that form using the clear option. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use a double. We're using a double here because we want it to automatically include the decimals. So it can't be just whole numbers. So I equals zero to one and we're stepping 0.1. So for every single interval, we are going to add that item and we're going to format with 0.0. I want it very specifically formatted. And so that's how we build this list. So we're building that temperature list. When user form initializes, this is an event here 
for our entire user form, we're going to initialize it. So that means when it initializes, we want to build that list. So it's always available to us. That's it. That's all the code. The next code is going to be for our optimizer form when the user decides they're going to select the workbook and then the module, then they're going to check for all the options. Let's familiarize ourselves with some of the names that I've assigned to these fields. So selecting on the properties, this one we're calling workbooks because it's a list of all the open workbooks. When we initialize this form, I want this list, this combo box to populate with all of the open workbook names. Once the user selects that, I want to populate the next list with all of the module names inside the given workbook here. So I've given this name called module. Then I've got five different options that we can optimize. The first is called misspelling. The second is called add comments. I'm reading it right from here. The third one is called indentation because we're indentating in code. This one's going to be called unused variables. And this one's going to be called code issues. So we're going to check to see if those, of course, are checked. And then, of course, we have send for review. But the first code that happens is when this user form initializes, we need to do something. I need to populate this list with all of the open workbooks. So once again, I'm gonna right click and view the code and I'm going to look for the initialize event, which is right here. In other words, you can get to it from here, user form, and then looking for the initialize event. We've already added some code here. So what is this code here? We're gonna dimension the workbook as a workbook. We don't need that there. Well, I guess we could clear, yeah. We're gonna clear, I'll put this down here actually, because this is the comment for here. I wanna clear any options that might be in that list. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a loop for every single workbook in application workbooks, meaning loop through all of the open workbooks. Then what we're going to do is I want to make sure that it's going to list all the open workbook names except for the AI code optimizer, right? I don't want to list the workbook AI code optimizer. I want to list all the other workbooks. Even though it is an add-in, it will still be listed. So if this workbook names, meaning the add-in, does not equal workbook names, then add it to the list. So remember, we're inside the workbooks option here. We're focused on this workbooks drop down combo box. We're clearing the values. Then we're going to simply add an item. And what are we adding? We're adding the workbook name, as long as it is not the added name. Add each workbook name except for the added workbook. And we're simply going to loop. So this populates the list. Now remember, when we make a change to this workbook, we want something to happen. Let's take a quick look at that. Notice that this contains nothing. However, when I add a coffee shop POS, if we take a look at there, all of a sudden this is populated with two different names of modules but only when this was not blank. So how did we do that? Well, that happens on the change, meaning when we make a change to that workbook, something happens. So we're gonna look for the workbooks here, and we're gonna look for the change event here. So when that happens, we've got some code that's gonna write. So the idea is I wanna loop through that workbook, and I wanna get all the modules from that workbook, and I wanna populate that combo box items with the names so we see inside our coffee shop POS, we have two modules, order macros and screen macros. So I wanna take those two modules and I wanna populate the list. So we need some variables, we need a workbook, we need the VB comp as an object, the VB project as an object, the selected workbook as a string, I want that name. We're gonna use a constant VB module as long, and that basically we're gonna define the constant for the standard module. Then what we're going to do is the selected workbook equals the option workbook's value. So what that means is we're getting the selected workbook from the workbook's combo block. I need to know the name of that selected workbook, whatever the user has selected. Inside this user form, options, this is the field workbooks and what is the value? So what workbook has the user selected? And also this is gonna be the workbooks. Remember workbooks were inside here. Now what I wanna do is I wanna find the workbook name by the application workbook. So I'm gonna set that as a workbook. Application workbook selected workbook. We're gonna set this object as a workbook. Once it's an object, the workbook, then we can work with it. Then I wanna clear, remember we've got a list of modules, but I wanna clear it first. Anytime we're going to be adding items, we want to clear the combo box items first before we add new ones. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna set that VB project to the workbook project. Then what we're gonna do is I'm gonna loop through all of the modules in the given project for each VB comp in the VB project 
in the components. So for every single component inside that, those are components, right? Even these modules are considered components. So we're going to loop through every single module or component inside the workbook. And I'm going to take the name of it, but I want to make sure the type has to be a module. There's many type of components in a workbook, but I'm only want to focus on the type of components that are considered modules. So only those that are modules. If it's a module, then what I want to do is I want to take the name of that component, which is the module name, and I want to add the item to the module. So what this is going to do is going to populate that list automatically. So as soon as we select, and that happens on workbook change. Once again, so as soon as we run this here, we see that as soon as we select that workbook, it's going to automatically populate with the modules. Very good. So we understand that these are just simple check boxes that we've given names. And next up, we are going to send it for review. So we've taken a look at the initialize. We've taken a look at the change event. When the user clicks the cancel button, we're simply going to unload me. And that means basically we're going to clear the form and then we're going to hide the form so that's unload me now if i want to use this outside remember i'm inside the code of the user form if i want to use it outside i would write something like opt selected form so basically what that's going to do is going to unload and i can use this anywhere inside my project me is only for code directly inside our user form so keep that in mind so when they click the save we're going to run a macro called build prompt and send so what i want to do is i want to build some instructions for chat gpt and i want to send it directly to chat gpt to help us fix our code and that's called build and send so if i right click here and i want to find that macro it's going to take us directly into the module here right here build prompt and send very good so let's going to go over that and see what we can find the only other code that i've already gone over these two show settings and save settings the only other one is the optimized code which will just show the form so there's nothing on that so here's what we're going to do build and send so what i need to do is i need to take the information that the user has given us what code they would like optimized and then i want to build out a prompt so we're going to need to know the selected workbook i need to know the selected modules and object what is the prompt text the prompt test is basically our instructions the user selection and the module code all the code inside the module the module code would be all of this or it would be all of this so that's the module code so of course we're going to need that then what we want to do is I want to go through that code. So we're going to need to keep track of it as a line number. And also we're going to focus here, our optimized setting form. So I'm going to focus on this form right here. This form is what we want to, I want to grab the workbook. I want to grab the module that we're using. And I want to know of any of these five are selected. So that's going to be important. So we're going to focus on that. If the workbook value is empty, that means the user has not selected any workbook. We should let them know through a message box and we're going to exit the sub if the module value is empty of course we are going to let them know and we're going to exit the sub i also need to make sure that at least one option is selected so if the comments is false or the unsent variables is false or the code issues value is false excuse me and not or so if all of those conditions are false all of those five check boxes i want to let the user know please make sure to select at least one code optimization option before moving forward and we're going to exit the sub right we don't want to send all the code to chat gpt without at least one of these five options selected so if they have decided to uncheck or not check any of those five we're going to let them know to at least check one before sending it so we're going to make sure once we have checked to make sure that everything is correct we can then assign our variables we're going to set the workbook the selected workbook as an object is going to equal to the application workbooks and the workbook so that's the workbooks that the user has selected and the module we're going to do the same thing selected module equals selected workbook based on the vb project and inside the components of that project and the value so we're assigning that entire module as an object that means this module or this module is an entire object so we can focus on that next up we're focused on building the prompt we need to give chat gpt some instructions on what to do now if for some reason you're not getting the results that you want this is where you would make those changes please optimize the following vba code based on the selected options return only the optimized vba code and let's scroll over a little bit with no comments explanations or any other non-code text do not include any introduction so return only the optimized vba code so i don't think i want that so let's just 
turn on the optimizer script. So basically, what we want to do is, I think it's going to be a little bit, do not include any introduction such as here is the optimized code. So basically, I only want the code. So that's what it's saying. Return only the optimizer. I'm just going to change that to VBA code. So although it's been pretty good, I just want to make sure. Do not include any introduction such as here's the optimized code. Your response should contain nothing but the code itself. Please include the following updates in your optimization. And that means two new lines. So we're giving it these instructions plus two new lines, but we need to add on more to that. I need to know if misspelling equals true, meaning the user decided they want to check, I want to add something to the prompt. So the prompt text, we've started it here, but we're going to add on to it now. We're going to add on this plus fix any misspellings in the comments and then a new line. Also, if adding the comments are true, meaning we want to add new comments where needed, then we also need to add on to that prompt text. So the prompt text is going to be equal to do not remove any comments and add new comments to every line of code that does not have a comment. I had a little trouble with it not showing all the comments, so I kind of worked with this a little bit, obviously. So we're going to go through each one, optimize the code. So if we want indentation here, so we're optimizing indentation. If that is true, we are going to say ensure the code is properly indented and update any indentations as needed. Next up, check for any unused variables. If that is selected, check for and remove any unused variables, kind of self-explanatory. And code issues, same thing, check for any potential code issues or errors. So it's gonna check for those. I'm just gonna change that to fix. Fix any potential code issues or errors. So that can be very, very helpful. It's pretty good with the fixing any errors. Very good. So reviewing the code issues, that's important. Next up, once we've gotten all five of those, remember two, three, four, and five different options that the user has, we are going to add two new lines to whatever we have. And then what we're going to do is I need to get the code from the module. So I want to clear out the module code. What do I mean by module code? It means I need to get all this code or I need to get all this code. I need to add it to the prompt. I need to say, here's your instructions, here's your code, now give it back to me. That's properly optimized. So we're gonna clear out the string variable first. And what I wanna do is I wanna go through every single line inside the module. I've already got the module here as an object. So we're gonna determine how many lines of code are inside this module. And we're gonna run a loop for the line number equals one to however many lines of code. So we're gonna start our loop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add to the module code. This is a string variable. Remember, I've got prompt text that's not part of it. We haven't combined them yet. I've got specific text that's prompt and I've got specific text that is only code. So we're going to go through every single line of code and we're gonna build out this string. This right here, selected module, code module, lines, line number one. So this right here is all of the text in a single line of code. So we're adding to that, we're adding a brand new line and we're just gonna loop through all the lines. So that's gonna build out all the lines of code inside a string variable. And then if for some reason the module code equals empty, that means they've selected a module with there's no code. So we don't want to send ChatGPT a request without any code at all. Next up, what I wanna do is before we add in the code, so we've built up this string, we've built up this string. Now we're gonna set the prompt text is equal to the prompt text. And here is the code, two new lines and then the code. So now we've built that up. Now I wanna give it some final instructions. So the prompt text is equal to whatever I have on here, a brand new line, and please return only the optimized code and commented out code. So that's all I want there. And next up, I'm gonna debug and print it if we want to, so we can see it. We can stop it there if I want to see what it's like. I wanna also prepare it for sending over. Now, when I do that, there's certain characters like the quotation mark that shouldn't be inside when we send it over. So quotation marks must be replaced with a black slash and a quotation mark, so combined. So not just the quotation marks. If we have a single backslash, I wanna replace it with two backslash. And if we have new line, any new line, I wanna replace it with backslash N. So basically we're converting it to a JSON friendly version of the text. And then of course, when we get it back, we have to turn it back into a friendly text. Next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a function called send prompt to chat GPT. I'm gonna send the prompt text and I'm gonna send the module code 
I'm gonna send all of that inside there. And the reason I'm sending the module code is because I need the original code and I need the updated code. I need both, I need the original code. Why do I need that? Because when we look inside our code optimization form, here is our original code it's going to go and here's our optimized our response from chat gpt so i'm going to need both the original and i'm going to need the updated so that's going to be important so that's why we have both great so now what we're going to do is we're going to run this macro here sub send prompt so it's a sub not a function and we're going to see the prompt text as a string and the module code as a string so we need both of those prompt text and module we're going to dimension some variables json is object an api key a chat id content and an api url when we send it some json request in the context as string model which we remember temp and json response we need all that we're going to get our variables from the setting sheet b1 is going to take on that api key remember we saved it in that sheet the model from b2 and the temperature in b3 so we're getting all of that our url is this open ai v1 chat completion so that is our correct endpoint or url now we're going to give it some context so we need this this is an assistant so your helpful assistant that optimizes vpa code based on specific user requests so that's going to give it our context now we need to prepare it to send over to chat gpt so we need it in a json body so it's going to be something like this the model we're going to set here this should be modeled here right and actually we don't need this the max token i don't need this one here this should be commented out because it just replaces it right this one's not necessary at all so we're going to build out that json request we're going to give it the model and the model the messages here is going to be the content the context meaning you are helpful assistant we're going to add in our prompt text remember our prompt text we've already combined everything here if we remember correctly that prompt text is everything we need including potential any issues we are going to make sure that the module code has been added in so we're going to have the prompt text along with the module code together we've combined them here we still have the module code separate and we've got them together right here so we're going to add in all the prompt text which is the instructions and all the code so we're adding that in into the variable here so that's important and also we're going to replace any other characters that might not work with the json format we're going to send over our temperature and then we have our max tokens next up we're going to initialize the http request using the create objects this is the type of object that we're creating we're going to use a post and we're posting that api url we're sending the header request at the type is application json we're going to use the authorization which is bare and our api key we also need to increase the wait times it could be up to a long time you know although my test it only took maybe 10 15 seconds five seconds but i just want to increase the timeout i did have some modules with some very large code that timed out but this will take care of this you can adjust this downwards so if you ever have a request to say request has timed out this will help increase the limit so this is to 10,000 minutes which is also 600,000 milliseconds then we're going to send it so we're sending that request to chat gpt we're going to get a response that response is going to be in the http response text it's going to go into this string variable we then need to parse it now this module json converters all kinds of great code that's going to help us parse that we will never get into that because <laughs> even i don't understand it but it basically it takes a really complicated json response and it allows us to extract information very easy like let's say i want the chat id i can just put id in here in json and it's going to extract that from all that large code into just this variable or if i want the content it's going to pull it into choices one messages and content so that's a little bit more complex beyond this training but basically we're going to be able to extract the content from the response we're going to be able to extract the chat id and the only reason i want the chat id is i just want to make sure it's accurate if it's empty or the content's empty that means there's some issue there's no response please check your model api key now the content remember i said once we convert it to chat we need to convert it back into something readable because the version is going to have a lot of backslashes but we need to change that to our quotation marks or if we get something like quotation mark we need to go back in double slashes and things like that so any double slash would have to be replaced with a single backslash so there's a lot of things like that that need to be updated so we can do that here so once we have converted it back into something readable so we're going to put this convert back to readable text so we can read that now i'm going to put it to the debug so we can see inside the immediate window so if we look in here and view we can view our immediate window from the last time that i ran this and i'm going to bring this over on this screen i had it so we can see that all our code here so it's just basically the code 
only the code, which is what I like. So brought it all there. I'm gonna clear this because we're gonna run it again in a moment and I want you to see it. We're gonna step through that code. I'm gonna see how it actually works. Great, so then what we're gonna do is this form here, we're gonna unload the optimizer set form. Once we've run it and everything happens, I can close this screen out. I don't need that screen because I need to open a new screen, which is this one right here. So this, of course, is our code optimization form. So I need to open that. So with the code optimization form, I'm going to take in that workbook's value and I'm going to populate a field. So I want to populate this. I want that workbook here and I want the module here. Now these are uneditable, but I want the user to see what workbook it is and what module just to confirm, you know, it's a good way. And also when I make the update, I want to make sure that the right workbook gets updated and I want to make sure that the right module gets updated. If those values are saved in these fields and they click update, I know exactly what workbook and I know exactly what module. So that's going to help me. So I'm bringing these over. So inside this brand new form code optimization form, I need to update those two disabled fields. Even though the user can't edit it, I want to make sure they contain some data that's very important. The current code, remember I said we need that module code. This is the original existing code. I want to update the current code value. Let's take a quick look at that. This one, I'm going to go here, is called current code. This one is called optimized code. So this is our optimized code. This is our current code. So I need to populate those with the current code and obviously the chat GPT response and the optimized code. So we need to populate those two fields and then I want to show the form. It's relatively simple. So we're just adding those four values into there. I'm updating the workbook. I'm updating the module, the current code and the updated chat GPT code. So those are the four things. Then what I'm going to do is show the form. And of course we can unload the other form. We don't need to see that other form anymore. Once this form is set up, now what we want to do is we want to update the module code, right? So when the user clicks, let's go ahead and here, this form here, this update existing code, if I double click this, it's going to take me to three different options inside this form. We have unload, which is the cancel. We have copy text to the clipboard, which is the last macro I'll get to. And we have update the module with the optimized code. So it's going to take all the code. Now, of course, the user can make any changes that they want before clicking update code. So that can be also helpful. They have that option inside that code. We need to make those updates. We're going to use the code modules and object, the VB components and object. So pretty much the same variables that we've used before. Focusing on the code optimization form. We need to let these know, are you sure you want to replace the existing code, giving them a way out? If it's no, we're going to exit the sub. And now what I want to do is I want to set the selected workbook. Remember, I said we're going to need the name of the workbook. It's in that disabled field called workbook value. So we're going to set the selected workbook. If for some reason the selected workbook is nothing, please make sure to open the workbook. The workbook needs to be open for us to update the code. We're also going to set the module in here. So set the VBP is going to be the selected workbook. We need to create this as a project. Why is that important? Because I need to focus on the components of that project. So this is our VB project. Inside the VB project, we're going to set the components and it's going to be the visual basic components. So basically we need to go into the project, go into the components and look in a very specific module. Inside that module, we need to update the code. And so to do that, we're going to set that VB component based on the module name. We're setting the module name right here. Remember, we brought over the workbook and the module name. We need both of those. The module name is here, the workbook name is here. So we need to grab that information. And once we do, we're gonna set the code module to the code module. So basically, we need to figure out exactly what module is gonna require the update. And now what we wanna do is we wanna put the optimized code. Remember, the chat GPT optimized code is in this field. I'm gonna put it in this string variable right here. Now, inside that, first I wanna clear all of the lines of code inside that module. So with the code module, we're gonna delete all the numbers of lines. So we're gonna start at one and we're gonna to go to the number of lines inside this module, pretty much deleting all of them. So we're clearing out all the code before we add a new code. Now what we wanna do is we need to add in the optimized code. So we're gonna do that, we're gonna insert lines. So inside this module, we're inserting lines, starting at one, and then we're going to simply put in the optimized code. Starting in line one, we're adding that optimized code. Then what we're doing is we're done with the form. We're gonna clear out that form, we're gonna unload that form, and we're gonna let the user know that the code has been updated. 
So that's pretty much it. So let's take another look and see how we do that. I've got uh, select optimized code. We're going to use the same workbook, but we're going to use a different module. We're going to use the screen macros this time, and we're going to check. And this time, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the code so you can see kind of what's going on. And so we're going to stop it in a few different locations as we can move. So I'm going to stop it right before it's sent. It's sent right here, and right here is where it's sent here. So I'm going to stop it right here. And then what it's going to do is going to run that code. So we're going to go back in here, and we're going to click send for review. And you see the code stopped right here. So we're going to bring over this, and I'm just going to clear out this. I'm going to delete this, and I want to show you some values inside this. So this is the immediate window. And I'm going to bring it down here, and I'm just going to rearrange the screen a little bit so we can see it. So what I would like to do is I'd like to see what that JSON request looked like. So we're going to go inside here. I'm going to put the question mark, JSON request. And we're going to enter it. So we see it's a whole lot of, we got role, your helpful assistant. So we can see how the request is and we can see how there's a lot of different changes inside the update path. I'm obviously, we're not going to go through all of this, but we can see everything. We've got our instructions. So that's all the requests that went out. So now I'm going to clear this once again, the model, the message, the role, the system. So everything is, that's what's going to be sent. Those are the instructions. So I'm going to clear that out. Now what I'm going to do is I want to get the response. So the JSON response, I'm going to set that right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit run and it's going to take a moment. And while it's doing that, we can see how long that it takes to update that code. So it's going to basically send. So we see that we've got the hour class here and we're going to look at it to make sure that we have it. Now, while it's doing that, you might see things like not responding or not responding, but don't worry, just wait. Depending upon the length of your code, it could take a moment. Okay, we're back and let's just take a look. Now we've stopped at this, which we got the response text. So let's take a look at what that response text might be. I don't necessarily want to pin this. I want to keep it floating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in the question mark and I want to know the response. So JSON response. We're going to take a look at the response. So here we've got a response. And of course, it's a little bit difficult to figure out, but we see we've got an ID. That's why we use this JSON converter, because I can extract this ID inside something called choices. So we have our main information, ID, object, created, model, and choices. Inside choices, we have index, we have messages, we have role, we have content. So it's kind of buried inside that. But what I really want to extract is content. So I want to extract ID. So to get the ID, it's just the main one and chat ID. So that's the main one. So now to get the content, we need to look inside choices. That's why I wanted to show you this. Inside the main area choices, what I want to do is I want to look for one role, one area down, which is called content. Inside messages and then inside content. So it's here inside messages, here inside content. That's why we use this JSON converter, parse JSON. It helps us pull out. So this is what I want right here. VBA and option. So that's exactly what I want. Option explicit, and we can keep it at there. So we have all of our information and then some stuff that we don't need. So really what I need to do is parse all of this and to keep it all there. So once we bring that, we're going to check to make sure the chat ID. So let's go ahead and tab through that here using F8. And I'm going to bring it here. So we're going to go through the function. We don't need that. So now we say, hey, you know what? I really don't want this code here. I don't like this one up here, but everything else looks good. So we're going to hit the backslash on that. We don't need that. We're going to dimension some items. So we see here our original code. I don't know how much different our original is, but it's probably been all commented out. I can see that there's lots of good comments here. Everything looks nice and organized here. Very well done. And once again, you see that. So we can also copy it to the clipboard. Now, if I want to copy this to the clipboard, the easiest way is probably just to use our send keys, which is something like this. You select inside here, you use control A, then you use control C. So that's pretty easy. Well, we could do that inside the code. Maybe we just want to copy to the clipboard and take a look at it if we want to do that. That macro, let's take a quick look inside here. I'm going to view the code in here and we see that I didn't give this button a name, which I probably should have. Copy text box content to the clipboard. So if we go inside our modules here, which is here, and that's the next one that I want to focus on. So we can remove these. We've already been through the macro. I'm going to go back in here and we're going to call copy text to clipboard. So with the code optimizer, we're focused in the optimized code field. That's the field I'm focusing on. I want to set the focus of that field. I want to send keys using control A. So I'm just going to put control plus A, select all text. Next up, control C, control plus C. I wish I had a program to automatically comment this out. Oh wait, I do. So now it's copy all text. 
and misspellings. So great, so we have that, so that's all that is. So it's gonna copy it. And so if I were to open up a, let's click insert module just so we can see. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside that, where'd it go? I think we've already copied it to the clipboard, control V, and there it is, perfect. So that works great. So we see that, I'm gonna remove that, otherwise we'll create issues. And then remove the module and then click no. So we see how copy to clipboard works really great. Very, very cool. So we've seen how we can use this really cool add-in to automatically optimize code based on several great factors to make our coding great. As always, especially with misspellings or adding comments, making our code readable, fixing any issues and removing unused variables and indenting the code. All we need to do is select the workbook. This add-in of course is absolutely free. If you do want to see this add-in as part of my AI tool pack, let me know and I'll add it on for you. Of course, in this tool pack, you don't need your own API key. That is taken care of by me. Also, you can get this AI tool pack. Just click the link down below, look for the AI tool pack and I'll make sure to send that over right away to you. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe and comment below if you're on YouTube. I appreciate all your help and continued support. Thank you so much and we'll see you next week.